so okay hi hello everyone thanks for uh, joining the stream um, also big thanks to special geek 40 for uh, hosting the stream much appreciated and uh, nice to see you back again and um, lurkin is also totally fine as long as I know that there are people out there that are interested in, in whatever I'm doing here. That's a win in my book. Uh, so anyway, cheers. Uh, what's, what, I, what I have been up to since last time? Uh, I've been working on the game again. Again, quite uh, quite nicely, I feel. Uh, so the stuff I progressed on uh, was um, was trends in the game, the trends for uh, consumers' um, interest in a certain product. Uh, categories or product types uh, so I'll show that uh, when we get started here but uh, what else what else um, uh, otherwise last week um, that's annoying me okay so last week um, uh, there was a birthday for the town that I'm living in and that was nice uh, there's usually like a like a backyard cafe then every year and it also happened again this year um, because um, because uh, it seemed like safe enough um, given our virus stats these days and, uh, and most of the restrictions here have been lifted um, there's still some limits to events so like on events uh, a maximum amount of a thousand people can attend um, so you know there are still some limits here but uh, all kinds of events definitely are happening all over the place now so uh, that was the cafe day uh, last week and uh, I also went and took a look around I didn't buy anything uh, but it was uh, nice to see the down sort of um, buzzing with uh, people and traffic again I don't know, I haven't seen that, that many people since um, <laughs> since last year even maybe I don't know it's, it's been a while so uh, so that was nice uh, also football games here now allow crowds to attend so that's um, I haven't attended any uh, myself yet, but uh, at least on TV it's nicer to see people in the back there cheering along. Uh, so yeah, I'm happy with all those things. Uh, I know it's um, it's a luxury, um, given how things are in many parts of the world. Appreciate these um, having these things. Um, they consider um, you know as as lucky in that sense. Even though my heart still breaks for uh, all the other people suffering. So. You know. Anyway, uh, that's uh, that's uh, for the introductions. get into actual work there uh, 
so I'm gonna show what I've been up to then. Uh, let's load a game to, to demonstrate some of the de some of uh, that stuff. So what I've done is that the older save games that didn't have trends yet, uh, when you load those sort of a history is generated um, it doesn't really like mean anything but I get something and uh, so the graphs won't be empty then so I have this uh, older save game from a bunch of versions ago and and uh, yeah, we'll see. It should load up uh, at autumn third, twenty third, year one. So let's check it. Um, so I have this new tab here in uh, the analytics uh, pop up. It's called trends. And this graph is kind of messy right now, and that's something I want to work on today. And there's some problems here that I need to need to uh, sort of fix. But, um, but I'll, I can still explain kind of what's what's going on here. So, uh, let's click all these off. What it shows now is that the popularity of TVs went up from like 10% back in spring 28. And it goes up to, uh, what's that, oh, like 30. Oh yeah, one of the things with both this and the finances graphs here is that people have asked for me to add a hover tooltip so you can actually check the exact values uh, when the mouse is over uh, like certain points here. And I do plan to add that to trends as well. Uh, but I need to figure out some things first for it. But it's not impossible that I will try to do that today. We'll see. Uh, so anyway, uh, this shows the trend going up for it. So... Like when you're comparing different product categories and you're looking at the trends, you might like decide, uh, okay, TVs are most popular probably, uh, and it would be a good idea to make a TV then, and then sell that because that would probably make a lot of profit for you then. get some motors here on the other hand like uh, microwaves are not doing too well so maybe um, maybe you wouldn't make those uh, so yeah right now all the trends are visible like right away but I'm thinking I'm gonna keep that uh, like this for a while um, but eventually I do want to add um, the need to actually research these trends with a marketer so uh, maybe you design a marketer per category a marketer per 
per uh, level maybe uh, and by level my I mean the uh, level of the product so right now the levels start from one and to go up to ten so you can have like level one TVs which are easier to make uh, but you could also make like level two TVs level three up to ten and each of those is more complex to make um, or at least like takes more time um, to, to put into and also higher level employees to to work on as well so that's um, that's the plan for that uh, what else um, can I talk about so As you can see here, some of the trends also shift. Uh, what's this? Uh, the walkie talkie trends went down, then went up again. The way this math works uh, here is that the lower the trend is, the less likely it is that it will keep dropping so um, if it goes too low it will start going up again um, and I thought that would make like a more interesting mechanic for it but um, in the end we'll see I mean I'm gonna test this out um, I'm gonna have some people play it and then see what they think uh, if this makes sense to them and so forth so there's uh, probably some balancing to do there at least and uh, the same with um, trends that are going up um, the higher they are the less likely it is that it will keep rising so that way it's like not that likely that it will eventually reach like a hundred percent or something um, I've also tried to make it so that trends sort of tend to stay stable um, so it's not changing, it's, um, it's kind of likely to stay on course and the same way if it's going up it's more likely to go up, if it's going down it's more likely to go down. So um, just by looking at the graphs you can sort of like guess where it's gonna go which makes it possible for you to uh, plan better for the future and I'm thinking that like um, unexpected events um, maybe scripted events still might happen so say like something happens that is scripted per level um, I don't know uh, some scandal or an earthquake or something like uh, scripted happens at around a certain date and because of that something um, causes the trends to change um, I don't know I can't really think of good examples right now but like, I don't know maybe everyone decides that they suddenly need phones uh, and that will be scripted then to go up at around a certain date um, but that's just like an example that what, what I might do per level uh, in a campaign level just to like give a sort of a direction uh, for the gameplay 
Another, another thing that I really haven't done yet, but I probably should, is sort of balance these out. Uh, let's take the beginning dates. Um, there's also some iffiness here that I need to figure out. This date selector maybe isn't working perfectly at the moment. Um, so I need to take a look at that. So anyway, uh, right now I have like random starting points for all the string, uh, all the uh, trends. Which start from minus five to, uh, to 15. Uh, these are percentages, by the way. Uh, so from zero to 100. Uh, I don't think I mentioned that, did I? Maybe I did, I don't know. So, uh, anyway, they start from 5% and go up to 15% um, at the beginning of the level. And they're randomized, but I think I should, like, have some sort of a balance here that, like, some categories will always be up here and some will be down here and which exactly those could be random but um, just like to make sure that you don't have a situation where every trend is down here and also uh, not that every trend is up here Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's like the overall plan. Um, also, I might need to add some stuff below here, um, maybe like more exact numbers uh, and whatnot. And also, one of the things that I want to work on today is uh, the colors here. When you look at the finances, then those do have different colors, so it's easier to understand uh, what line is what on the graph. But these are all black, so they just uh, become a mess here. So that's something I want to do today, but one of my concerns is that I'm going to run out of colors uh, because there's going to be a lot more categories than these um, six right now. Um, like probably not hundreds, but at least dozens. So, will there be enough colors for all of them? Uh, I don't know. And you know, then also you have to... I don't know. There's like, um, questions here, like... I can't probably put them all on the graph at once because that would also make the graph um, just pretty much a box of, uh, of everything when they get mixed up. So maybe only a few should be visible by default and then you can like sort of select the sets of categories. Uh, maybe they should all be off by default. Mm, I don't know. There's, um, there's questions here. Uh, but 
one thing it definitely should do is save the selections here. Like if I leave only TV on here, I click away, click back, everything's back. So um, needs to be saved. So maybe that is something I can do today as well. Um, yeah, then what else? Um, the marketing calculations don't even take the trends into account right now, so should that that too? did some changes here too for those who've uh, seen this file before uh, these were previously hard-coded and uh, these are the name parts that get added to the name when the names are Previously, those only mattered for contracts. And that's uh, basically uh, what the AI names the product. So this is called Magic, and this is called Yellow Phone. Let's see what else do we have? Not, nothing else. Say I uh, create my own product here. So it uh, generates a name for that, and you can change it, but these come from a predefined list and um, when a company uses a name that gets sort of like trademarked to that company and then they sometimes keep using that name and so so to make it so that the products are not just called uh, product one product two product three as the cycle continues. There's also like suffixes that get added to the product names and those are um, coming from this list. So something like um, you know, ultra, extra, advanced, upgrade, premium, pro, light and so forth. So just to make it a bit more interesting. And those were hard coded before and that was definitely not great so I uh, made this list and this is then referenced uh, from the translation file here so all these can also be translated to other languages then and these ten here are the the base name uh, generation strings then oh wait yeah like like here so phones can be named brown silas babble yellow phone and so forth so anyway uh, when it comes to that color thingy I'm gonna add that here then 
Oh yeah, I just realized something that I missed. Um, I did not set the tags for the stream on Twitch. So I should do that. Um, thing is though that have Twitch open on my laptop, not on my main computer here. So edit stream info. So what can we add? A uh, pixel art. I add usually the game. It's weird that Twitch doesn't save these between streams because it does save the category for it. Next we have programming. Uh, I also like to add AMA for ask me anything. Okay, so that should be it. Uh, okay. Anyway, colors, colors, colors. Um, I'm gonna add them for all of the product categories then. So, um, thinking if there's any colors stuff that I'm using already somewhere. here uh, character parts yep uh, has colors so it's basically a hex number uh, which is a common format for colors and um, even though I can't um, calculate hex numbers to normal numbers um, just in my head, I do know some uh, some of those uh, values. So like F is 15. Uh, FF would be uh, 255, I think. Um, and the colors are usually divided like this. Um, so the first two would be red from uh, 0 to 255 then. Um, the second one is green. And the third one is blue, and then the fourth one is the alpha of the color, or like how how much you can see through. Uh, and FF would be uh, that you can't see through at all, and zero zero would be that it's invisible or transparent. Oh yeah, transparency is a good word for this. Uh, so this color would be pure white. And zero, 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 zero. Um, should be six zeros. Uh, that's pure black. So 
I guess black is something I can use. So let's start with that. Then this would be red. And I'm just using random colors here. And this is green. Then this would be blue. Now to mix these colors up. Uh, let's see. Mm. Red and green would be yellow. to actually uh, load these from this file as well so uh, where would that happen product categories statement here so if it has trend color then I should load the string I guess I could also add a function that takes in the string instead. Hmm. 
mean, I can reference the the other stuff that I have using it already, but seems there's this function. And this is part of LeapGDX or the engine that I'm using and this is not done by me. Okay. So instead of new color I could use this value of thingy. wonder though like what happens if there is an error there somewhere like, I don't know if this was malformed in some way by accident uh, would it crash then? suspect that's likely uh, but um, we'll leave it like it is for now we'll fix it when it becomes a problem uh, so anyway that function here now. So category set color color string and that should be it then. Let's check it out. And here it is. The yellow is kind of too bright here. I mean, it's fine in the graph itself, but uh, against this background, it's kind of too bright. Uh, kind of the same with green. The others are fine, I think. So maybe I should tone those down a bit. Which one was the yellow one? This one. So, um, again, I kind of know these colors from uh, from memory. So, AA should be less bright. now uh, one thing that I can actually do is uh, just pick colors from uh, from a graphics program uh, such as this so this is the color code for that yellow so as you can see it's uh, quite a bit different Give it another try. Mm, I'm not liking this yellow still.
good color. Uh, maybe this yellow then. to read it um, but that's because the background is gray and it just doesn't stand out like if the text had some sort of borders or something then it would be better visible there uh, this should stand out though. So this is quite a bit darker now. Yeah, that's better. It's kind of brown instead of yellow now. And this way you can much better see the graph lines here. Now, I do understand that um, like if you have some sort of color blindness, this might still be confusing, and especially if I add more products here, then um, I would have to make some of the colors more similar than they are right now. So that will definitely be a problem, but since you can also toggle these off, then it might be fine. Um, plus, I'm um, also thinking that maybe I should add a color picker for each of these categories so you can adjust the colors yourself if you cho so uh, uh, wish to and um, they should also probably make it so that these use the same kind of uh, toggle boxes as uh, this button for example maybe even have icon for each of these. Though I'm not sure about the icon idea though. For now um, all the products have icons and they're big like this. They definitely wouldn't want to have those here. So I do have to think about that. you know, uh, user interface stuff always is um, kind of puzzle, um, especially with the limited space that I have here, due to the uh, small resolutions. So, you know, uh, it's kind of hard to to make sure that everything is clear and concise um, and intuitive right away. But you know, I do try and I uh, go through lots of iterations until, uh, until it seems good enough. So, uh, the colors are fixed now, or at least somewhat functional, so that's uh, one thing done. Uh, so what else can I uh, work on now? Do you have a task list on my laptop here? So I can mark that done. Yeah, I guess um, the next step would be adding 
the trend into calculations uh, when actually working on the products or also I should add a percentage sign after these numbers uh, let's see if it's easy to do that then I will do it right away if not then the other things um, product product what uh, product pop up so there's a function here that generates the crap searching for craft uh, wasn't the best idea after all wait 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 um, graph image maybe that's something I can search for then these are all commented out over this add marker so is this the date marker yeah ah here it is y marker suffix as simple as that and that's uh, awesome hopefully it means that the past me thought of this ahead and he did good job past me uh, so yeah we have the percentage here then which kind of takes space away from the graphs themselves but I don't know, we'll, we'll live with it. Uh, okay, so that is that. Um, but then I wanted to move on to the... Uh, the actual calculations. And that is... Uh, done every day oh yeah now I'm just realizing something that I did not mention about trends that is that trends are set every uh, week on Mondays so um, so at the beginning of the week you see where the trend is at and you can base your 
uh, decisions on that. Uh, okay, anyway, so uh, the product selling calculations themselves are done once per day. So they has changed. There's a function like that. This is where all the magic happens. So what I've decided to do here, or what the trend number actually means, is um, it's basically like the percentage of people in the country or the, the level where you're playing at uh, so it's the percentage of those people who are willing to uh, buy that type of product during that week so um, by week uh, I mean I'm dividing it by seven And the trend here is um, right now uh, just hard coded, but I should load it from from the trends uh, object then. Is in uh, in level so get trends and then get um, actually don't even have a function for that yet. So the trends are stored in a complex object map uh, and they change. Yeah, that's one of the things that I couldn't show you yet is that the trends are different for each uh, product level as well and the ones that I was showing in the graph were level 1 trends and uh, you only can make level 1 products at the moment anyway but I want to make it so that you can select the level in the trend graphs as well and the levels and trends are also related in a way that um, when there is only like um, say say let's take TVs for example. Also, uh, thanks for following. Um, Game Boy Link. I'm uh, not trying to ignore you here or anything. I was just like in the middle of talking and um, didn't want to lose my train of thought, which I did anyway. But that's fine. So uh, thanks so much for following. Uh, anyway, uh, I was saying the trend levels. Um, so say you have TVs, for example, and on the market. There are only level 1 TVs um, at the moment. And it doesn't matter if it's like yours or uh, by some uh, computer company um, or like one of your competitors. But there's like TVs on the market and they're only level 1. And then the trends for higher level products um, pretty much stay uh, stable. And the one that's uh, fluctuating is the trends for that level one uh, TV. But once 
a level 2 TV hits the market, uh, either it's done by you or a competitor, it doesn't matter, uh, then uh, that defines like the max uh, uh, trend level as well. And the level 2 trends for that uh, TV then is what uh, starts fluctuating. And level 1 trends uh, for TVs will gradually like drop. So basically the thought process behind that is that um, um, like people are not interested in these older model TVs anymore. They want the newest, the, the best uh, that is out there. And uh, basically this is what this uh, whole block is uh, doing here. Taking all that into calculations and putting in weight into this random uh, uh, pool that I have here. So anywho, I was trying to add a function for uh, getting the latest trends currently active trends. So what should it return? It should return just a single double value. Get current trend and that will take in category of that product and the level of it. So first of all we will check if that category even exists. If it doesn't then um, uh, that's probably an error of some kind and I'm guessing um, the trend for non-existing things should be zero. But if it does exist, then we should get the value of it. And that value is this thingy. Which is an array of arrays. Uh, although I should check that the level here also is supported, and then last element in that uh, array. So that's uh, that and then this will have a value. But I should also make sure that there even are in this array so size is bigger than uh, zero and should probably also check that this um, isn't null So that's pretty much uh, how it works then. And I can use that function here. So this category ID and this. Wait. 
There is some function here to check the product level. trend but I should also divide it by 100 um, because the trend numbers go from 0 to 100 but for these calculations I want to use uh, the format from 0 to 1 That's uh, like um, basically 0 0.5 would be 50% for example. So um, I can't really like very well demonstrate this, um, the result of this calculation I guess. But I can show where exactly it's taken into account. So let's uh, let's pick the usual stuff here. Basic marketing skills. Uh, the logo is fine. Let's name it something. glasses to look more like a security guard so yeah um, yeah looking good keep the things secure here uh, so anyway gonna quickly have to do the usual decorations so like a few tables here and there. but uh, but it's fine then you will look for new employees but let's see who can we hire we do need a manager so you go here already an engineer but since I'm gonna be doing marketing then we should get another one and we need a designer then we also need a tester that's what the people here will be looking for then. Uh, I could also cheat 
just to make this quicker actually so let's do that I do have that power as a developer so add five and some more CVs here and we should be able to find at least one or more uh, testers so where are you at? where are you at tester? here we go so we can even hire level 2 testers uh, yeah, let's get one of those then and we don't need to search for new employees anymore So these don't really matter this much right now. Okay, so let's assign a manager here. Jobs engineer, designer, tester. And then the CEO will be doing marketing. just randomly picking so that will start adding awareness here well before I continue though uh, I should make it so that marketers add more awareness than they do right now if I don't divide it then um, I don't know about these okay let's uh, let's get back to the game then also hire a marketer to help out here uh, excuse me so where are the marketers at I'm not seeing any oh here they are even level 2 this one um, and I can be buddies with the um, the other bold guy here um, bold guy so you will be marketing as well 
selecting for female. And then everyone is working and stuff's going on. Okay, so now it's been completed. So let's get it ready for production. Do -do 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 -do. Some people got experience. Now one of the things that I do want to do today is make it so marketers also get some experience. Because right now they don't. That's unfair. Because that means the marketers would all like stay the same level that they are. Uh, but let's see, we've gotten quite a bit of awareness already here. But we will not launch the project yet. Something I want to do first, and that is I want to pass this first week by because right now it's so that if you've played only one week, the trends aren't showing up, and it's the same with the finances graph. And I think both of these are kind of a problem should figure out how to show these even on the first week. Um, the thing is that on the graph to draw a line you need at least two points. Um, and that is basically like uh, Monday and uh, next week's Monday. But on the first week, you only have that one one day, so you only have one uh, point in the graph, so there is nothing to draw the line to. But I could just make it so it's a straight line, right? That way it's at least showing something. So uh, let's uh, let's see this week go by then. Could actually skip it here to next Monday. So now we actually have something going on here. So, uh, the product that we have is phone and it's called Tele. And what's the trend like for phones? It's, it's not great. Uh, it's below 10%, so it's like, a, like 8, I'm thinking. Eight or seven or something along those lines. And again, I mentioned it earlier, but this sh should uh, show some sort of a hover here. So out of all the ones that we have here, actually phones are like the worst, probably. Uh, microwaves are also low. But, you know, um, by this data, uh, I should have picked something else instead, like maybe headphones or walkie-talkies. Uh, the thing is, though, I haven't actually finished uh, the other categories here besides phones and TVs. And the rest um, you can't actually make yet. So that also could be something that I could work on today. 
um, to make at least one of these. Let's. Um, these are just one level uh, puzzles for it. But I would need to make all 10 levels for all these categories. Plus, when I add more categories, I would need to make for all of those. So, um, maybe I could eventually make some sort of a tool for it that uh, generates like something uh, for me to begin with and then I can just adjust the details. Otherwise, this is just so much work. So, okay, anyway, um, marketers have been doing uh, good work here. So let's launch the project. And also let's change the price then. The price still isn't taken into account here. So I could set some crazy price and people would still buy it. But uh, let's let's not do that right away. Let's start with a more reasonable price. So the production cost per unit of this is ten dollars and the sale price here then is um, twenty dollars and they still need to add the um, translated text to this hover uh, anyway uh, the price is 20 so the profit per each uh, unit sold is 10 and now every night uh, when the day changes the calculations for sold unit system. So let's uh, fast forward here a bit. Let's see uh, if I'm even making any profit. I sold <laughs> two units, and that's uh, that's not a lot. So that's a profit of twenty dollars here, and that's definitely not enough to pay the wages. Uh, so maybe I should uh, fire everyone except the marketers, so I don't go bankrupt here. So the designer, you're gone. Wait, <laughs> I'm not even uh, firing the staff. I'm, uh, I'm just removing people from the list of people I can hire. And uh, this is the place. Okay, so fire. Tester, fire. Engineer, you're out of here. Manager. Gone. Uh, marketer stays. The CEO stays. Uh, also, uh, it looks like it's a mess here. So um, maybe I should hire a janitor. I janitor. Let's see who's a good one. I like this alien one. Make this look nice. Um, but we can also, meanwhile, decorate the office a little bit. Let's get one of these small tables. One here. 
get one here. And then we need lights. Because they're going to sit in the dark. Aziz, light! You know what movie I'm talking about here? Fifth element for any trivia fans. So, plastic plant. Uh, for some um, additional decoration. Uh, since we have a lot of trash, maybe we should have a trash can. So they don't throw all this crap on the ground. So how are uh, how are, are the sales? Um, they're getting better. We've sold 13 units here. Uh, made uh, $130 in profit, but still that's uh, definitely not enough. We're still losing more money than uh, making, but it's it's getting better. It's 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 slowly getting better because we're adding more awareness and we're selling more and more units every day. Just the problem is that uh, the TVs are not. Phones are not that popular. So, uh, so yeah, what what can we do? So mayhaps. Um, also, um, just to put these numbers into context here, awareness here means the number of people who have heard of our uh, product here and sold units is um, well basically sold units but this calculation takes the awareness into account so only the people who have heard of the product are willing to buy it or are like in, in consideration so uh, let's take a look at the calculations real quick uh, in the back here. Oh, this is where where um, they has changed. Uh, this is where it happens. So units sold equals uh, calculated awareness. Uh, this takes into account that the people who have already bought the product those won't buy it again um, so this is what the awareness here means so it's not the full awareness but uh, some amount and then uh, it's um, multiplied by trend value and divided by 7 so this is every day uh, so let's uh, let's calculate this out say we have like a thousand people who have heard of it uh, so that's the uh, awareness value right so uh, we multiply that by our trend value, um, which is um, it was about eight percent, I think. So this is divided by one hundred uh, over here. So uh, this is the Estonian format, but this is uh, zero point zero eight. 
which is 8 percent then uh, so this in turn is divided by 7 uh, which becomes this crazy long number and that's the 7 here this is then uh, multiplied by our awareness and this is why the number of units sold is that small um, so it's like 11 by day on the other hand say the trend is maximum and that's 100 we divide that by 100 and then divide that by 7 then multiply by the awareness and then we get like uh, 142 people well, excuse me We'll buy it per day. If we multiply this by seven, we get how many is sold per week, and that's uh, one thousand. So that's basically kind of like how that math works. I don't know if you could follow any of that, but um, that's uh, that's how it is. So uh, to make it sell better, we could make it so the awareness rises even faster than it does right now. multiply this by 10 which would mean we multiply pretty much everything by then so the unit sold by day would be multiplied by then and the profit as well so let's see that better then so what were we making like like hundreds per week maybe now it should be thousands per week then um, let me switch the view here so let's uh, let's speed things up see how things go next week should be more telling because um, it was kind of the end of the week when I made that change we're making like 700 per day which is a lot better now it was almost 800 already and we're actually making a profit now another way to make more profit would be to rise uh, to raise the price of the product uh, plus 10 
that already should double our profit. And that's because the price of the product is not taken into account right now. Uh, it would eventually be taken into account here. Uh, but the price value right now is one, and this is hard coded, so it's always uh, multiplied by one, so it doesn't change the overall unit sold value. At these um, low levels, it would probably be better if the profits for the product aren't as high, especially if it is an unpopular product like the phone is in this case. Although I see that. Uh, it has uh, gone up this week and interestingly walkie talkies have taken quite a dump here so let's see these a bit better so what are we we're like up to 13 percent trend for the phone and like four percent for walkie-talkies and the fact that phones have gone up uh, usually would mean that it's more likely that it will it, it will keep going up for a while longer uh, so we can uh, kind of fast forward here and see that happening in uh, in the future the money um, money come in making riches here and like even taking it to account that like I did have other people working on it before would have uh, them still working if I didn't fire them um, and that would cut into our profits quite a bit I still think at these rates we would be in the green so Maybe multiplying the progress uh, awareness setting here um, by 10 was a bit too much. Maybe like a smaller multipli multipli multiplication uh, value here would be more balanced uh, but 
how much exactly Multiplied by one was not enough. Maybe multiplied by two. So um, we were making about a few hundred per week before we're making tens of thousands per week right now we should have been making thousands per week then earlier I guess all the awareness hadn't kicked in yet so I don't know uh, maybe multiplied by two would be enough but I wouldn't really know that um, before I make a new product overall and try again so let's uh, let's do that then continue So let's uh, let's wrap this project up then. Let's continue, and it's gone. Um, I'm not sure if it removed these guys. Maybe they're stuck on the project now, and if that's the case, then I'm gonna have to. Start a new game, maybe? Mm, but that would be a bug. Oh, uh, I can just load the previous save game. Uh, remove them first. Like this, and then I can cancel the project. But then I'm gonna need a bunch of new people uh, because I fired everyone. So let's see. Uh, we need a manager. Let's get you, the bunny guy. Uh, actually, we should. Put you on the fancy seat here. Then uh, a designer, a tester, and an engineer. So a designer here, a an engineer. Go. It's uh, it's the middle of summer one, and um, you're wearing a Christmas hat. Why? Why? Oh, wait, to who did we need a a tester, right? Be you, Ralph. They're all going home and coming back. So let's start a new project. Um, let's check the trends first, though. Let's not make the same mistake again. Um, although I can only make. and phones right now. It 
since TVs are kind of there, uh, I should make another phone then. So, a phone. Uh, let's make a different one this time. Let's make one that is more expensive to produce, but. But the men really like it. Desirability bonus for male, and they're gonna start uh, working then. And they magically finished all this work in a day. Because it's that easy to, uh, uh, I guess, uh, make new phones. It just takes a day. <laughs> I don't know uh, how exactly I balance this stuff. here per week so that's how much the product would have to sell for it to be worth it to me uh, so let's see I would need at least Price of 22. At least, at, uh, we need at least um, what is that? Uh, 500 units sold per week, right? Uh, even more, like uh, 600 even to make at least some money here. That would mean I would need at least like 10,000 awareness. So... After all, let's try five. And we'll see how quickly do we get to that 10,000 awareness. Like if we get there by the end of next week, then it's fine. coffee machine so we should hire a handy worker but um, right now I 
can just throw this away and replace. So let's uh, let's get that handy worker in. Work chunky sounds uh, sounds my, like my kind of guy. So how are we doing uh, with the awareness? Uh, we need ten thousand this week. By Wednesday we have Thursday we have four thousand. It's still not enough. But I mean this also depends on on what kind of marketers I have here. And the more I have Also taking into account that uh, how much does a marketer cost? Um, I guess you can see that here. Salaries. Wh which one is the marketer? Chad Rice. Chad is costing me one thousand four hundred eighty per week. So he should at 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 least what's that like? 2,000 uh, awareness per week to make him worth it. I'm not sure he's adding that value right now. Maybe that multiplication by 10 was uh, a good value after all. And again, it does depend a lot on the price of the product. Maybe I just make it so that the price calculation uh, is fine with a like higher profit margins. Uh, hello there, guy from Mars. Um, thanks for uh, joining. Uh, hopefully. You're not uh, too confused as to what's going on here. Uh, what I'm doing right now is trying to figure out where the balance lies for some of the uh, calculations behind the scenes here. So what's going on um, is that we made a product basically through this menu uh, where you can uh, rearrange the components and that product is a phone. And we finished working on that product and now uh, we have not launched it to the market yet. 
but uh, but we're building sort of the marketing awareness for that product right now. That's reflected in this number here. So like 5,000 and, uh, and more people have heard of this product. And when we um, look into the details more closely here, we can see like what kind of uh, demographics those are. Um, and that doesn't really matter that much right now. Uh, but it will in, um, in the future. So anyway, uh, Guy from Mars says the simulator I'm building here looks promising and uh, thank you. It's called Office Management 101. I can um, throw the link in the chat. Um, and that's the link to the Steam page where you can already wishlist it. And also, if you wanna give the game a try yourself then there's a free demo uh, from a, a an, an older version of the game so these features that I'm working on right now are not there yet uh, those will be in the Steam release eventually so anyway uh, we have people uh, marketing this uh, product here and we're trying to figure out like where to strike the balance for the calculations so that you would make just about enough profit um, to uh, even out the um, the salaries uh, that we're paying for all the people we have working here. So how many people totally have worked on this game so far? Uh, I'm mostly working on this alone, um, but I do have some people helping me out every now and then depending on, on my fin financial situation. Um, I mean, it's pretty much like a zero budget game uh, or close to it, but uh, my brother has worked on some of the artwork here, like uh, I can quickly show um, like the company logos uh, these are different ones that you can uh, choose, and also the faces for the competitors uh, those were drawn by him and there's like a bunch uh, that are not listed here but that are in the game um, what else uh, he also wrote most of these uh, newspaper articles that show up every week although these specific ones were written by me those are kind of like the tutorial ones, but some of the later game ones that show up, those were written by him. So stuff like that he helps me out with um, every now and then when I can uh, afford to pay him for it uh, because I don't want him to work for free. Also, uh, another guy that has helped me a lot is... Um, is uh, someone I call a co-producer for the game and he has helped me out with some of the business stuff um, with some of the game design um, also some of the marketing stuff and uh, things like that so he helps out like more behind the scenes So I had one guy who helped me make the trailer for the game and made some artwork for that as well. I had a composer hired for the trailer, but the rest of the music I made myself. So there's like uh, bits of this and bits of that. So is there any specific reason I made the game use third? 
32 bit graphics. Um, um, you mean like pixel art graphics or like um, the color count specifically? Um, but basically, what I went for here is like a bit of nostalgia, but also a bit of what I'm even capable of pulling off. Because I don't have any art background, uh, really. I'm um, I've been a programmer most of my my career, so I just picked a art style that I'm capable of doing, and it happened to be pixel art. So uh, that's kind of what I went for here, but also uh, a bit of nostalgia. Because this kind of reflects the games of of 90s of of this genre. Uh, none of them looked exactly like this, but um, maybe like somewhere in the ballpark at least. But also like um, uh, Kairosoft is a company that makes a lot of. Games like this uh, for mobile, though, not for PC. So, um, so they kind of have a s like similar isometric gra graphical style and also pixel art. So, that's uh, my thought process behind it. Um, I, I clearly understand that pixel art games sell less um, on the average than uh, 3D games, for example. So, you know, I'm, uh, um, I'm accepting that. And there's also some other factors um, here. I mean, it is kind of a pretty hardcore uh, genre in a way so even though like simulation games and tycoon games tend to do pretty well on the average um, it's still like a niche game sort of But you know, since it's uh, mostly mostly a hobby project, um, it's I, I think it's fine. Um, even if it doesn't sell like uh, like a hit game would. Um, I know there are like fans out there that are eagerly waiting forward to this game. And um, that's enough for me. And it got the lead stuck. Uh, I'm kind of worried now. I don't want to leave it like this because it's like it's half on. And if I happen to spill it, it might go everywhere. Oh, but maybe it's fine. I don't know. So. You're asking why this guy is uh, wearing a Christmas hat. I'm not sure if that was a mod that I made or is it in the base game? Let me check real quick. Advanced. Uh, wait. menu yeah it's a, it's a mod oh wait that's for the snow that's uh, that's for the snowmen snow women okay so the Christmas hat is part of the base game then I guess but since the characters are generated randomly 
some of them might end up wearing uh, the hat then. Um, there's like all kinds of... Um, like uh, this head, this is the one that was the mod. Uh, but I guess the Christmas hat is part of the base game then. I, uh, I draw, drew it during a... A, uh, a holiday special, I guess, um, that I tend to do. Um, so yeah, there's like all kinds of weird characters here. Uh, an alien monster type. Um, this is supposed to be a cat or a lynx or something. And that one I drew because um, uh, a wild lynx used to live um, in this town, uh, this spring. Uh, and it was uh, spotted near my house where I live, like maybe a hundred meters from here. Uh, and after that I drew this uh, fella. Unfortunately, the uh, Lynx died um, because of uh, malnutrition. It was um, it was a young one. It probably lost its parents or something, and uh, it just couldn't uh, hunt in the wild. That's why it lived in the town and uh, was just eating whatever was available here from people's trash and whatnot uh, but that was apparently not enough so it uh, died eventually so it was sad uh, rest in peace but uh, we uh, on these streams we ended up calling uh, the links Mr. Whiskers so this guy is Mr. Whiskers now uh, what else do we have uh, we also have this bunny uh, head guy. Uh, we have one of those here. As you can see. So uh, all kinds of stuff and I do want to keep drawing like all kinds of crazy uh, characters here. Just to uh, make the game more fun and unique in a way and not to have just you know just plain boring office workers and uh, and yeah um, the smiley face uh, on the people when they go to the toilet is just like a way to censor it Oh, some, this is a rare event. Uh, I'm not even sure I've ever seen this before. Uh, in game. But I, I knew it's a, it's a feature. This is when uh, one of the uh, employees falls in love with another one. And that's when it shows up. But it's like such a rare thingy to happen that uh, that I've never I don't think I've ever seen it happen in the game before so wow wow um, how do I uh, how do I make the heart sign it, it, it's not like this uh, I got confused now uh, like this then Uh, but yeah, when you check the uh, details, um, you can see that uh, she is in love with Ralph. Ralph Saya there. But the big question now is: Does Ralph love her back? Fumiko. Uh, so he likes her at least. 
he doesn't love her yet at least but but he likes uh, her so a little bit of of his romance going on here so the mechanic is um like when people like each other uh, or they're in love they tend to look out for each other in the office and then they start chatting and that uh, sort of detracts them from work but they do get bonuses from uh, from that so when they're in love um, and close to the one they love then they get like a motivation and loyalty bonus So yeah, uh, that actually does mean that you can afford to pay them less, uh, just like you say. But uh, thanks for saying that the game is uh, creative and, uh, and funny. Um, it's uh, it's uh, nice to hear such compliments. Um, I've been working for on this for a long, long time. Um, I started this like years ago or more even now and um, and it's finally starting to like get somewhere I feel like um, since it is a hobby I'm not working on this full time I'm just you know, working on it when I can and feel like it that's why it's taking so long but also it's like a really ambitious one um, there's a lot of stuff that like going on behind the scenes uh, that you can't really see in the game yet um, like you can change the building and the looks of it but also the size of it size building so you can expand it that's not in the demo but this was a much requested feature from those who did play the demo oh, here. Um, there's some box here that I need to figure out that, like the window just hanging in the air and whatnot. I can't even move it. So that's another bug here. I don't know why I can't move it. Uh, the um, You're asking why do employees feel sleepy all the time? They're not sleepy, they're uh, slacking off. That's what the icon means. Uh, so I can tell them to go back to work. But that... Uh, has some negative effects on I can't recall on something on motivation or uh, or loyalty or some on loyalty I think. Uh, but you can also hire more uh, or the um, managers to um, look out for people slacking off and then uh, telling them to go back to work. Um, and yeah, uh, you can add more floors, not on this map, but there are other maps for uh, testing purposes right now um, that have more floors. Um, guess, um, we can quickly see, I don't know if those work right now, because I'm in the middle of doing some stuff. Hopefully they won't crash, we'll see. So this is uh, a bigger map and this one has more like floors or stories but you can already see there's like some box here. Uh, this is supposed to be an elevator. And um, it's kind of here but not on the upper floor 
so I need to fix that. Uh, but there's like another map that has even more floors. But apparently this one is completely broken. It doesn't have any walls. Um, I was redoing how the uh, walls are defined and that's uh, not finished for this map yet. need to uh, fix that uh, so to make the game more realistic the employees should leave home after their 9 to 5 and that's how it worked originally but um, the way time works in this game it turns out to be um, what's the word maybe not as fun so they do go home uh, still but they go home on the weekends only uh, like you see right now and then they come back and they work uh, the whole week and that's because I didn't want to like break the game flow too much So that's why I changed it to how it is. So this is like a fictional world anyway. Um, so I, I feel I can um, sort of bend the rules here a little. So anyway, uh, what I was trying to do here was to launch this product. And start making some money before we go bankrupt. And most employees are not actually doing any work right now anyway because uh, I don't have any projects going on so uh, in the demo that is available you can't make your own products um, so this menu here doesn't exist yet but what you can do is work for other companies so you can get your managers to look for new contract work um, not this one so when did you find it uh, we can um, uh, we can yeah um, you mean kill oh uh, this is a debug feature this is not available uh, if you're not in debug mode there's some others like um, see backpacks uh, you can't see this uh, when you're playing normally uh, but actually all the employees have uh, an inventory and one thing that you may not realize uh, in this game is that there's a crafting system which is not common for um, for tycoon games I'd say and uh, it's mostly used for paperwork uh, we don't have any though so let me turn on some of the more debug features to show that also big thanks for uh, for following uh, much appreciated so I turned on the furniture debug here so now I can buy everything so there's paperwork that is being generated when working that piles up and to make it take less space here you can uh, put one piece of paperwork on top of an another that's basically like crafting 
Uh, but it also works with uh, some other furniture stuff. And then you can combine these into boxes. And then that still piles up. And uh, eventually you will need filing cabinets. And you throw the paperwork here. And if filing cabinets are not enough, then there's also shelves. That you can fill up. And even that uh, eventually piles up. And it's sort of like a puzzle mechanic as well. Like how to get rid of it, all of it. But there is a sort of a perk. That you can uh, have some. Uh, uh, actually, I think it's randomly given to some employees. It's called bookworm, and when they have that perk, instead of eating at the fridge, they go eat the paperwork instead. But also, uh, since uh, some players were annoyed really annoyed with this paperwork mechanic. I made a mod uh, for paperwork shredding. So if you don't like that paperwork mechanic you can just throw all that in the shredder. So yeah, that's uh, that's that. So anyway, um, I'm kind of uh, past my usual timeline here already. So I'm thinking I'm gonna start wrapping up. I did get some work done today, um, not a lot, but I will uh, keep jogging along. Uh, and next week maybe I can uh, show some of my progress then. Um, Let's uh, go to the um, usual ending screen then. So uh, I will be back uh, next Monday. Uh, what's that? Um, 1 p.m. EST, uh, 6 p.m. GMT, or uh, 8 p.m. in Estonian time. That's where I live. So I do these streams weekly, uh, every Monday, uh, although I do admit that I've skipped a few in the past month because of various reasons. I was I was sick uh, at one week and then we had some thunder uh, storms here when I also skipped it. Uh, but other than that, Yeah, um, I, I try to do this weekly, um, although I did mention last time that I'm considering maybe um, uh, putting an end to the streams at some point and maybe doing some YouTube content instead. Uh, we'll see. Um, because like on, 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 a, on, a <laughs> on one hand, there's not a lot of viewers for these streams but on the other hand there's always some and there's always like someone in the chat uh, and uh, and watching so you know it's uh, it's hard to say um, like maybe if I made more uh, YouTube content um, maybe and more YouTube oriented content that would get more views But, but who knows? Who knows? Um, anyway, uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, I do really appreciate it, though. And um, uh, so, uh, thank you, Guy from Mars, for uh, chatting and hanging out. And thank you, Special Geek, for uh, lurking and uh, hanging out. Um, so, hopefully, we'll see you again. Um, and uh, goodbye.